Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in C Sharp. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to type quotes within a string. So kind of an oddball in this tutorial. Then I'll be showing you how to nest the loops, or a way of looking at them. Uh, because it's very important for you to understand how to read nested loops. You'll probably be tested on it if you're in school. Or um, you'll always be tested on loops. There, That's a big thing. How to continue and break from loops, or anything really. It could be an if statement as well. And I believe that's it. Continuing, breaking, nesting, and the quotes. Okay, so the first thing I'd like to show you just to get out of the way is how to put quotes inside of a string. Let's go to this enter and, well, create a string. So I go string quote is equal to, I don't know, he said it looks rainy. Okay, there we go. Oh, come on. There we go. Okay, so uh, we have our quotes because that's what the he, that's what he said. I should probably capitalize it. Uh, but the text is all black, and we have a whole bunch of errors. Why is that? Well, that's because um, as this is being read by your computer, once it hits this second quote, it's saying, "Well, the string's done. That's it. Everything else past that is normal code." Uh, uh, so, in order to solve this problem, all you have to do is put a backslash in front of whatever you want to change into a character. So what does it exactly do? Well what the backslash does it, is it treats whatever the following item is, so that's the, uh, or whatever that following character is, as a string. So likewise we need to put one next to this other quote too. And there we go. So now we can create a simple message box and have it print the quote. Save print and let's see if it works he said it looks rainy there you have it so there's your quote so just put your uh, backslashes um, in front of the two quotes that you want to have as part of the string and that's about it with that so now we're gonna be moving on to nesting loops alright so let's actually get rid of all this you know what I won't get rid of it no yeah I will get rid of all this so um, basically nesting Nesting involves having a loop, or, you know, it could be an if statement, or a function, it can be whatever. Uh, we haven't learned functions yet, so don't worry. Um, but yeah, nesting is just, just means having one thing inside of another. So, inside another like that. And it doesn't even have to be a loop within a loop or an if statement within an if statement. You could nest a loop inside an if statement or an if statement inside of a loop. Um, that's all nesting. So let's uh, create a, an example here. So we have int i is equal to zero and let's count the iterations for i in just a basic loop. So I'll create a, a simple while loop and while i is less than five we'll go list collections dot items dot add and in order to make it simple we'll create a string that's called i is equal to and then concatenate the actual iteration number the actual i with it and we'll need to increment so we'll have i plus plus so I'll click save then I'll build the application I click enter and we get i equals zero i equals one two three and four all the way till it's less than five so that's perfect so five times it came up um, so, shall we move on to a nested loop? Shall we put a loop within this loop? I think we should do that. Uh, in this example, I want this um, nested loop to go in between. I want um, this code to be done first, before the loop that I'm going to put in, but I want it to still be before the increment. You can do it in any order you want, it does not matter. Of course, it can change how, how it um, runs, but that, that's, that's pretty simple to understand. So let's do a for loop, shall we? So I'll go for, and I'll show you why I'm doing this. For, then let's create a new variable called j is equal to zero, semicolon, j is less than five, then j plus plus. And what should we have happen? List collection dot items dot add and we'll want to throw in j is equal to 
well, whatever j is. And that's it. We don't have to increment because it's already right there printed. So let's see how this works. If I press enter, um, we have i equals 0, then j equals 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, then i equals 1. This is actually kind of hard to read. I'm going to actually change this. I'll have it say um, first. So this will represent the first loop, and this will rep represent the second. How about that? Because that was actually kind of hard to read, wasn't it? There we go. So first equals zero, then we have a whole bunch of seconds, then the first again, then a whole bunch of seconds. So what's going on here? How is this working? Well, how this is working is we set i equal to zero, then we went into this while loop while i is less than five. So the first thing it did was print the first equals zero, which it did. Then it went into this loop and it set j equal to zero. So then it went through this loop five times printing the second equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or, or 0 through 4, which it did, so 5 times, 0 through 4. Then once it was done, it left, then incremented i by 1, then went back into this loop to the beginning again. So we got the uh, i is now 1, so now 1 is less than 5. So basically it does this whole thing 5 times. So we should have 5 firsts, and five sets of five seconds. So we have one group, two second group, third group, fourth group, and fifth group. So there you have it. Now why is the J why is the J starting at zero every time? That's another question. Since we're using a for loop, we're actually setting J equal to zero every time we go back into this loop. If we made this a while loop right here, then j would never have been set back to zero once it first went in that loop again. Because when we went into the second iteration of this while loop, and then we hit the four again, it automatically set j back to zero. It would not have happened if uh, we used a while loop. If we used a while loop, then you would have to manually, outside it, set j equal to zero. You would have to do that. So bear that in mind. Also bear in mind, if you used a while loop there, or do a while, you'd have to declare j up here. So bear that in mind. So let's learn how to continue and break. What is the difference between continuing and breaking? So the continue, what that does is stops execution for that one iteration. OK, that makes sense, right? So let's do an example of a continue in the nested loop. So if and then we have a little uh, curly brace here so let's say if j is equal to 2 let's continue let's see what that does do you know what that does? I don't know. let's find out let's just mess with these keywords till we find out press enter and we get first equals 0 looks the same 0 1 3 4 wait what happened to the 2? Well, what the continue does is, what it does is it stops that loop only for that one iteration. So, um, if we had this collection thing um, before this if statement, if we put this if statement after the collection, it would not have mattered. It still would have added the item. But since it checked this if statement first when j was equal to 2, it stopped, the, it stopped cold. It did not continue that iteration at all. And it went right to the th uh, fourth iteration. So this is the first, second, fourth, and fifth. So that's what the continue does. So it will not execute any code that's below it for that one iteration. Now what does the break do? We looked at the break before. We've seen the break before in the, what did we do? The switch statement. But what does it do in a loop? Let's find out. We're now only seconds coming up uh, twice. Well, the reason for this is the difference between the break and the continue is that the break, when you hit that, not only will it stop for that one iteration, it'll completely bust out of that loop completely. So that's it. Done. Finished. So allow me to put that up there, and I believe that's about it for this tutorial. I hope this uh, example is a very uh, visual, very easy for you to see how to read through a um, a nested loop. So I'll put down break. I have a little bit more time. I could probably go through it one more time. 
So, breaks out of loop uh, completely. It can still always go back to that loop if you were to call that loop again, but uh, it's supposed to break out of it indefinitely. So allow me to explain this, this again. So I'll just get rid of this if statement here and print it again because it's very important that you understand how to read nested loops. You'll most likely be tested on this and everything. Okay, so we have two variables. We have i and we have j. So i is 0. So when we go in this while loop right here, while 0 is less than 5, do what's inside here. So it does this. First is equal to i, which is 0. So we have that. Then the next piece of code inside this while loop is this for loop, where it sets j equal to 0, and while j is less than 5, print j, which it does five times. Then it leaves that loop and then increments that i by 1, then starts right back at the beginning. What do you think will happen if we make this a while loop instead? So if we go while j is less than 5, I'll cut this. So while j is less than 5, I'll print j++ there, and I go int j is equal to 0. I actually want to show you the difference. Um, oh, whoops, semicolon. I want to show you the difference here. So I click enter. We get first, then we get all of our seconds as usual, but now we don't get all the nested loops for the other four times we go through this while loop. Why is that? Well, remember, the for loop kept sitting, setting j back equal to 0. So if you write while loops like this, note that once it's done with this, and it goes j is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5, so it's not true, and it leaves, it will increment i by 1, which is then 1. So um, first one, I'll equal 1 right here. But j will still be equal to 5, so it will always ignore this thereafter. So in order to fix it, you can use a while loop. You can just put uh, j is equal to 0 right there. And this will do the very same thing. So that's why, and there you go. And that's why I use for loops, because then you don't have to do anything fancy like this. Or that's not fancy at all. That's actually messy. The for loop is fancy. So that's uh, some different ways you can look at it. Um, so I hope this tutorial was helpful for you, and I'll see you next time.